Hello, Aternum, and welcome to KOTT News, Aternum's number one source for news. And this is the War Report. No change in the dynamic of Aternum last night as the average Joes went out against the serpents of Globo Gym. We spoke with a team representative about the matchup. Congratulations on your victory out there in Morningdale once again, retaining control of the region in the name of the Covenant. How do you feel it went out there, my friend? Um, yeah, they kind of gave us a run for our money. Um, they eventually did take us to four at the end, but uh, we held it out most of the time. You know, we just held it down and uh, came out victorious. A word from other participants were that the uh, Musket Squad were really on point tonight. Can you uh, give us any uh, comment to that? Um, yeah, of course, our uh, Musket Squad uh, is the best. Um, you know, we train hand trained by Panda himself. Uh, we even decided to drop down and uh, shoot some enemies, get off our wall. Was there anybody else out there who stood out in their performance tonight? Well, uh, mainly Panda. Um, you know, he trained the whole Musket Squad himself so that we can perform, as you heard. And uh, I also want to give a shout out to the pen shot ability on the bow. Um, I was told to run it or it will be bench, and I ran it and it's broken. So uh, thank you to Kai for that. Quickly to the weather today, and as the sun continues its not-so-perilous journey across the clear Aeternum sky, be on the lookout for corruption invasion forces after sunset across 30% of the island. Four more lineup submissions for simulated fantasy combat resolution tonight, brought to you by LARPCO. Remember, if it isn't LARPCO, it's cardboard. First up, the Marauders of Iron Reavers assail the Covenant forces of Average Joes for control of the master fishing port town of Reekwater. The last time the Iron Reavers attempted to ransack the shrimp and shanty town of Reekwater, they were turned away. But with a week of practice, maybe they're more prepared. It wasn't Outcast who turned them away before, but they'll do everything in their power to do so today, as they struggle to maintain their grip on the Reekwater Union of Fishermen. Meanwhile, the syndicate members of Pharmaceuticals assault the marauders of bottom of B-tier Dodgers for control of the island's primary oil reserves of Weaver's Fen. Pharmaceutical forces avoid slogging through the bog by taking the northern pass in from Eden Grove, taking advantage of their knowledge of the local geography. Bottom of the B-tier Dodgers were not caught unaware though as their patrols around the remaining territory have been high since regrouping back to the bog. Later, the Marauders of Cybersecurity attack the Syndicate members of Strawberry for control of the medicinal hot springs and resort destination of Ebenscale. Cybersecurity attempt to hack into the Ebenscale Tourism Council mainframe and steal away all the cryptocurrency and NFTs assigning ownership to the resort destination. But will they succeed with 12 kilobits? Strawberry forces may know what all that means, but they don't know about all that because all they need to know is that tonight is another night of fending off simultaneous assaults. In the nightcap, the Marauders of Unethical assault the Syndicate members of Strawberry for crown and kingdom of the Western Monarch's Bluff. The Marauders of Unethical mixing it up once again, this time taking a new path into Monarch's Bluff. But will they overcome the divided forces of Strawberry? Standing with the setting sun at their backs, the Syndicate members of Strawberry look out over the enemy before them, patiently awaiting the signal of the battle horns. Be sure to tune in for complete coverage and reactions from the citizens tonight at 11. Until then, this has been War Correspondent John Chalant. KOTT News.